All right, everybody, I'm just gonna lay it out straight. Do not buy presets. Hey everybody, my name is Jack Beasley. I'm a freelance photographer in Phoenix, Arizona, and I make the occasional YouTube video about photography. Today I'm talking about presets, specifically Lightroom presets. And before we get started, just a little reminder, hit the subscribe, the like, and that notification bell. It helps the channel out immensely. And you really want to stick around to the end because I'm going to give away my presets that I use on a regular basis to you for free. And I'll have that, those instructions to get those presets at the end. A lot of people will tell you that you shouldn't use presets because you need to get into Lightroom and play around with the sliders and figure it out yourself. I got that and I understand that, but when you're new, you don't understand all those sliders. So presets aren't so bad in that you could reverse engineer them. You can go in, see what other people have done, see what they've done with their sliders, look at the photo, see what the effect has been, and then you can say, oh, that's how they did it. So in that case, presets are not that bad, and I understand why you might want to use them. You know, there's a lot of photographers on YouTube who are out there selling their presets, and you see the title of their, uh, their videos where you can get, with one click, you can have professional looking photos just like his or hers, right? You can't just throw a preset at a photo and suddenly, boom, it's pro looking quality. Uh, it's either a good photograph or it's not. Um, it either matched the, the style of that particular preset or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, it's not gonna look good. And what you'll find is when you actually apply their presets to your photos, they don't look that way. In fact, they may look absolutely horrible. So why do these photographers do it? Because it's a money maker. They're out there making money. In fact, there's YouTube videos for photographers to teach them how to do this exactly and make money off of it. So here's a dirty little secret about the Lightroom preset business. A lot of people out there will take somebody else's bundle, bring it into Lightroom, make minor, minute changes, change the names of it, and then resell it as their own. Why? Because you can, it's easy. Lightroom makes, lets you make those changes. But here's the deal. Even if you really, really wanna get into presets and you wanna try them out and see what they're like, there's tons of free options out there. You don't have to pay somebody for their bundles of presets. So here, let me show you some examples of where you can get Lightroom presets for absolutely free. Let's go. If you've got Adobe Lightroom, that means you're paying a subscription. That means you also have access to the Creative Cloud, which has tons of free assets they just give you. All right, let's start off with the Creative Cloud, and this is the, uh, the website itself. Um, what you wanna do is go to Free Assets. It's under Discover, Free Assets. And as you scroll down, you'll be able to see anything that says Free Assets in one of these blocks right here. I have found that if you were looking specifically for Lightroom, you have to find the ones that say Lightroom on it, or else it'll be like Photoshop, which is fine, but we're talking about Lightroom here, okay? So here's one right here, free Adobe Lightroom presets and tips for architecture photography. Click on it. It's gonna go into this gentleman's artistry, and you can see download Yamaguchi's presets. There you go, you download them and go to town. And that's not the only one. You can scroll farther down. Here's one on nature photography, uh, portrait photography. Here's macro, macro photography. There's three pages of these things. Here's uh, indoor portrait photography, and I actually recognize that photographer. Food, pet, all occasions. Uh, so there's an asset right now. Let's move on to the next item you could go to. Now, you should have an app on your desktop called the Creative Cloud Desktop. If you go in there, you go under Marketplace, looking for all plugins, and then under Apps, you wanna check off Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. So you can see right here, there's a wide variety of plugins. These aren't all presets. However, they all go into Lightroom. Now, a couple of these you can see I have already installed it. It's got this download symbol, it says installed. But there's also a few that I have not done. For example, the Cinematic Vibe 01, click install and it'll do it for you and then installs it for you. You don't really have to do anything else. Now the last one I wanna show you is the actual, actually go into Adobe Lightroom itself. So the cool thing within Lightroom is there is something that if you click on the Discover tab, it pulls up a bunch of photos. 
And what has happened is thousands of photographers throughout the world have uploaded photos with their edits built into it. So you can actually see what they did. They, it goes from the raw photo to the finished product, or raw or JPEG to the finished product. And you see up here at the top, there is a wide variety of different options or different types of style or subject matters, those kind of things that you can apply to whatever you're doing. Let's do this one, it's a very high key photo. As you see off to the right, they actually show how the person did the various changes to you know, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, that kind of thing. Pretty cool. And at the very end, at the bottom here, it says save as preset, which means you could do just that. You could hit save, downloads to your computer, you can use that as a preset. But here's something I wanna point out to you. This edit is based on this particular raw image. The image that you upload or that you apply this to may not be the same. For example, you can see up here, they increased exposure almost two and a half stops. Well, the image that you try to use it on may not need to be overexposed for two and a half stops. They went high key on this thing. Let me th throw another example at you, a sports photo. Let's do this race car right here. So this car started way overexposed. In fact, if you look right here, he had a reduced exposure of three stops. Your photo may not be overexposed by three stops, but when you apply the preset, if you use this preset, it's gonna drag the exposure down three stops automatically. So that's just to keep in mind that just because somebody else edited a photo a particular way, in particular style means it's not going to necessarily work on the photos that you have. But either way, here's three different ways to get presets for free from Adobe that you didn't have to pay a dime for. The next thing I want to show you is I'm going to illustrate that just because you use somebody else's presets doesn't necessarily work on your photos. The example I'm showing you right here, I'm gonna show you the same photo three different ways. What you're looking at right now is the original raw photo that I took. You know, as I, I used to do weddings a lot more than I do now. This is the bride, there's a small lake, pretty nice spot, right? So this is the way I edited it right here. And actually I used a preset. I'm not even sure where I got that preset. Uh, I'm not sure where I downloaded it, but either way, I liked it. So this is the way I edited it. Now, mind you, remember I started with this. Okay, so this is the way I like it and the way it came out. Now, let me show you another pack that I bought off the internet and it was a wedding pack. Remember, I was getting into wedding at one, one time. I wasn't sure how to edit wedding photos and I went out and bought some presets. So let me show you what some of these wedding presets that I got and what they do to the photo. Okay, as you see here, I made, I bought this pack and it goes all the way down. There are 95 presets for this wedding pack. And as we go through it, you will see it does some really interesting things to this image. Again, these are supposed to be wedding photos. I'm not sure how many brides want this kind of look this blue look. And mind you, I paid for these from somebody, I don't remember who, and why would I ever use any of these things? They're just absolutely horrible. You get my point here. It, just because you get a preset off the internet somewhere doesn't mean it's good or it's useful or you would even ever want to use it. Which becomes the question is, why pay for them in the first place? Okay, so now that we've determined that presets are not always the best thing out there, let's find out how to make our own, right? So I already did this edit for this particular wedding photo, right? And I'm gonna show you how to actually set these up as your own presets. So under here, under presets, you see the little plus minus or the plus button here. It says add new presets. Click on that, create preset. And you wanna make sure everything down here is set or checked off. You see here under preset name, you can change the name of it. I'm gonna call this Wedding, let's call it something interesting. Wedding Bliss. Did that sound good? You probably wanna buy it just looking at it, right? And then you hit Create. And what it did was, I told it to put it under User Presets. So let me go down here to User Presets. There it is, Wedding Bliss. And just before it is my standard preset I just called Wedding. Now, I have this preset, but remember, it was custom made for this particular photo. Is it gonna work for every single wedding photo I take? Mm, probably not, but at least it's a starting point, right? 
Hey, at the beginning of this video, I said I was going to give away some of my presets that I use on a regular basis. Well, here they are right here. Go to this link. I'll also put some instructions down in the description below. Hey, and while you're here, check out a couple other videos that have to do with Lightroom editing. All right, guys. I'll see you next time.